so we go now to the last uh, talk today. Uh, Laura Hughes comes from Australia, and she's going to uh, present uh, the talk Assessing the Biomarker Potential of LARC2 and uh, GSAs in Parkinson's Disease Monocyte. Uh, thank you so much for the kind introduction. It's um, a privilege to be presenting some of my work here today. So this is my disclosure statement. I have nothing to disclose. Um, this is an overview of my talk. First, I will outline the use of leucine rich repeat kinase 2 and glucocerebrosidase, or GKs, as potential biomarkers for PD. Then I'll discuss the development of a protocol to measure LERC2 and GK's enzymatic activity and lysosome function in peripheral blood cells. And finally, I'll discuss the use of this protocol to measure LERC2 and GK's activity and lysosome function in patient cohorts. So we need better biomarkers for earlier detection, monitoring of prognosis and stratification of patients into clinical trials. LERC2 and GKs are two PD relevant proteins with LERC2 mutations being the most common cause of familial PD, and mutations in GBA1 also being associated with increased risk of PD. Altered LERC2 expression and reduced GK's activity have also been associated with idiopathic PD. Both proteins are highly expressed in peripheral blood cells and are involved in similar biological and inflammatory pathways. As altered LERC2 and GK's activity in peripheral blood immune cells are potential biomarkers for PD. It is therefore important to have a robust and reliable assay to measure the activity of these enzymes in peripheral immune cells. So in a collaboration between the University of Sydney and the University of Florida, we developed a peripheral blood cell collection protocol with parallel flow cytometry assays to measure LERC2 and GK's activities in monocytes. Readouts were measured both at baseline and with stimulation by interferon gamma to see whether this may exacerbate any phenotypes that we saw. So to briefly outline the protocol, cryopreserved PBMCs are thawed and treated overnight with interferon gamma, which is an inflammatory cytokine, MLI2, which is a LERC2 inhibitor, or NCGC758, which is a GK's activator. The following day, two flow cytometry panels are ran, which include a fixed cell panel to measure LERC2 levels in activity by levels of phosphorylated RAB10, and a live cell panel to measure GK's activity and lysosomal cathepsin activity. Readouts are measured in classical, intermediate, and non-classical monocyte subsets, which are distinguished on the basis of cell surface marker expression. So flow cytometry data for the same samples analyzed independently at both the University of Florida and University of Sydney were analyzed for correlations between the two sites in classical and non-classical monocyte subsets. Data from the University of Florida are shown on the y-axis and data from the University of Sydney are shown on the x-axis. A significant positive correlation between the two sites was seen for a majority of the readouts showing that our protocol can deliver consistent results across institutes. We then use the optimized protocol to measure GKs and LERC2 activity in monocytes from idiopathic PD, LERC2 PD, and GBA PD patients, as well as matched healthy controls. Samples collected by Barcelona and Columbia repositories were shipped to the N University of Florida for analysis of the fixed cell LERC2 panel and to the University of Sydney for analysis of the live cell GKs panel. These graphs show the GKs activity in classical, intermediate, and non-classical monocytes, with the GKs activity index on the y-axis and the different treatment conditions on the x-axis. And the different patient groups are shown by the different colored bars. There was a significant decrease in GKs activity in monocytes from GBA PD patients compared to IPD patients in classical monocytes and compared to all other groups in intermediate monocytes. There was a significant effect of treatment with higher GK's activity in interferon gamma treated monocytes compared to baseline with the largest effect seen in non-classical monocytes. These graphs show lysosomal cathepsin activity using the BMV109 cathepsin probe 
An intermediate monocyte seals a significant increase in cathepsin activity in LERC2 PD monocytes compared to healthy controls. And a non-classical monocyte seals a significant increase in cathepsin activity in GBAPD monocytes compared to healthy control in IPD groups. And interferon gamma increased cathepsin activity in all monocyte subsets. Uh, these graphs show LERC2 expression levels. In classical monocytes, there was higher LERC2 expression in GBAPD compared to healthy controls. In an intermediate monocytes, there was higher LERC2 in GBAPD compared to healthy control in IPD groups. And interferon gamma increased LERC2 expression in all three monocyte subsets. These graphs show LERC2 kinase activity as measured by levels of phosphorylated RAB10. In classical monocytes, there was higher LERC2 activity in GBAPD compared to healthy control in IPD groups, with no effect of group seen in intermediate and non-classical monocytes. And stimulation with interferon gamma increased LERC2 kinase activity in all monocyte subsets. So analysis is still ongoing, but to summarize our findings so far, we found a reduction in GK's activity and an increase in lysosomal cathepsin activity in monocytes from GBAPD patients. The increase in GKs in cathepsin activity with interferon gamma stimulation may indicate some type of association between these readouts and inflammatory responses. We also found increased LERC2 levels and increased LERC2 kinase activity in GBAPD monocytes. And while there was no effect of MLI2 or NCGC758 at the group level, Further analysis is required to see whether these drugs were effective in particular subgroups of patients, and this could help inform the basis of a stratification biomarker assay. So finally, I would like to acknowledge everyone listed here, in particular my supervisor, Dr. Nicola Samko, Professor Malou Tanzi, and Dr. Rebecca Wallings at the University of Florida, Drs. Roy Alcalé and Alessia Grido for providing the patient samples, and the Michael J. Fox Foundation and Shake It Up Australia for funding support. And thank you all so much for your attention. Thank you, Laura.